We spoke late last week with a group of voters from all seven battleground states to discuss the election, their outlook for America's future, and more. How many of you voters are going to cast your ballots for Donald Trump? Uh, Mary, you raised your hand. You are in the very important state of Arizona. Uh, what's driving your decision? Well, my my decision is I live right on the border in Yuma, Arizona. And I know in the last three and a half years, we have had just uh, horrible, horrible problems in Yuma with um, a lot of illegal immigration coming through. Our economy is awful. Yuma's Unemployment is 16%. So the economy is a big factor as well. Uh, just a combination of things. Our groceries have gone up. Just, just everything has just really gone downhill in the last three and a half years for us in Yuma and Arizona completely. Cole, you are in uh, Georgia, also a very key state. Why? do you plan to vote for Donald Trump? For me, I do not look necessarily at the candidate specifically, but just the broader party and the direction they're hoping to take America. Um, for me, uh, some of the top three issues would definitely be our economy, um, immigration. And then um, I would also say, um, as we've come out of the pandemic, just seeing how the two different political parties handled the pan pandemic. Um, I think Kamala Harris and the Democrats are a little bit too extreme on the issue of abortion. Um, I do not support um, the idea of allowing abortion at uh, 20 weeks of pregnancy and certainly not um, with no restrictions. Um, and so I would prefer candidates who are more aligned with my pro-life position. Mike, you're in Nevada. You said you will be voting for Donald Trump, but he makes it hard. <laughs> He makes it hard for you to feel good about that vote. Can you explain what you mean? You know, uh, there's parts of Donald Trump which I admire and parts of Donald Trump which I, I, I cringe, for lack of a better term. And, you know, in, in the debate when he said, you know, they just asked him, January 6th, would you change anything? Um, I think he had an opportunity there to step up as a leader and and take some ownership people went to jail and i think you know i think that would have showed a lot of of courage for him to do that so i like things on on the economy uh t tightening up uh inflation yes yes and yes you know i think those are the primary issues in this election you know you, as you get into the periphery and and just how you know he conducts himself sometimes it's you know it, it's hard to put a trump side in the front yard <laughs> based on some of his behaviors. But you're still doing it. Why? Well, because I'm a fan of the economy and a fan of success, right? I think there's been the there has been no driver in the driver's seat in our economy for the last three and a half years. And I think we've suffered mightily for it. That drives a lot for me. I don't have to like people personally. I don't have to agree with some of the stuff they do, but I have to you know kind of go for the greater good. Christopher, you are in North Carolina. Um, how are people doing there amidst the fallout from this storm? And, and what makes you uh, an enthusiastic Republican right now? Uh, I've always been an enthusiastic Republican since I voted for Ronald Reagan in 1980. Um, I've been fortunate enough to be part of Trump's ground campaign in 2016. Uh, and I met some very amazing people. I really, really like the the maturation process that he's gone through. He got his feet wet in 2016. He he learned the, the hard way. He got tagged a few times. He stepped in it a lot. It's easy to look in the rearview mirror and say, could have, should have, and would have. But when you're in the moment, you make the best decisions you can at the time. I trust him to do that. I trust him to make a decision. Um, but do you, Christopher, ever feel uh, uncomfortable, like Mike said he did, with things that Donald Trump says? Um, at some times I, I have, but in this day and age with the, what we're being faced with the, the, on the, on the global stage and the not so nice characters that will look for a weak spot in the United States of America to bring her to her knees. I'd rather have in, in a, 
in the ocean full of uh, bloody water shark, great white sharks, I'd rather have an orca in there than Flipper protecting me. And I know Donald Trump will get in there and he will fight for us. He may not say what we want to hear, but he will execute on our behalf. And it's obvious the man nearly, nearly died. He took a bullet mm -hmm. for us. He got back up again. And mm -hmm. you cannot dismiss that. And the, his instinct was to say, fight. So that right there tells me this man doesn't, he doesn't have to be there. How many of you are planning to vote for Vice President Harris in November? I, I want to dive into exactly why that is. Linda um, and, and then Kathy, why are you supporting Vice President Harris for president? I first voted for Reagan in 80 as well. And all of my voting years, I was told character counts. And as I look at Donald Trump, I either have to say character counts and not vote for him or say it doesn't count anymore. I did vote for him in 2016. Hmm. I voted for Joe Biden in 2020. And I will vote for Kamala Harris this year. That's um, interesting that you, you voted for Trump, then Biden. Now you're going to vote for Harris. These are very different people. What is driving your decision now? I have listened to Kamala Harris and the things she has to say. I truly believe she cares about people. I think her life shows she cares about people. And she truly wants to work to make our day in and day out lives better now. And I, I, I care about now, but I have grandchildren and I care about what kind of a world we're gonna give them to build on as they become people to vote in the next few years. And again, I go back to character counts and Donald Trump is a proven liar. He has said and done too many things that I think should be disqualifying from January 6th to those poor people in Springfield, Ohio. They must just be terrified. Kathy, you're in Pennsylvania. Why are you voting for Vice President Harris? I hear and see the fears that people have just contemplating another four years with Donald Trump, um, I don't have anything that I can think of that I would say I agree with him on. Um, and I, like Linda, would say, to me, character counts. So uh, Donald Trump is a no for me. What about you, Mauricio? You are uh, joining us from Wisconsin. Um, January 6th to me is beyond unacceptable. Uh, that's sacred territory that was stormed, he riled up that it was not a protest. That was an insurrection. The plans were to overthrow a legitimate election. That will never be tolerated in in my viewpoint. Do you believe that Vice President Harris, if she is elected president, that she will be very different from Joe Biden? Or do you see her continuing the issues and uh, agenda that he has pursued for the past four years? I'm sure she's probably a little bit more liberal, um, but she would accept the results if she lost. Um, and that's big to me. Linda, back to the original question I asked Mauricio um, as well. As a Harris supporter, do you believe that the vice president would continue Joe Biden's policies or do you think she has a different vision for the country? I think she will do some of the things President Biden has done. And some of the things Biden has done has helped our country quite a bit. I would like to hear more specifics of what she plans to do, but mm -hmm. I would much rather see someone want to give tax breaks to the middle class than the most wealthy people in our country, which is what Trump wants to do. I just wanted to follow up on this idea of 
how uh, President, a uh, future President Harris might or may not be different than President Biden. And I'll be honest with you, I do not envy uh, Kamala Harris because she has to defend President Biden. And she also has to kind of thread the needle of following his policies, maybe making some of her own. But listen, um, there have been some failures in this administration. And I think whether you're on the left or the right, you can hopefully see that. Um, and for me, some of those those things off the top of my head were we did not have a good withdrawal from Afghanistan. Um, prices are through the roof, roof for consumers, and we can debate how we got at that. But at the end of the day, inflation is out of control. And there have been a record number of illegal border crossings under the Biden administration. And so I understand that she has to appeal to the base and she doesn't want to alienate any Biden voters. But it's very shocking to me that there is not one thing that she could think of that she would have done differently than President Biden. Show of hands, who is concerned about uh, the issue of abortion and reproductive health care going into this election? OK, Mary, you're not raising your hand. You you live in a, in a state where uh, abortion access is currently um, permitted up to, to 15 weeks. Uh, you're good with that where it is. It's not a motivating factor for you, even though abortion will be on the ballot in Arizona. The way I feel is that I'm more concerned about women's health. And I think that we need to concentrate on prevention, prevention of unplanned pregnancies, not using abortion as birth control. That's the way I feel. I'm a mother and a grandmother, and I think that that's what it should be. I think 17 weeks is a good amount of time. Now, of course, just like everyone else that said, rape, incest, um, you know, problems with the pregnancy, things like that. Of course, I can understand having an abortion and you find out later in your pregnancy that something's wrong with the baby. Okay, you know, that's a different story. Would you, Mary, like to hear candidate Donald Trump and candidate J.D. Vance echo your beliefs. They avoid talking about the specifics. You were very specific at 17 weeks. Would you like the candidates to be that specific? At the federal level, and the reason why it was brought back to the, to the states is that different states have different feelings. California is much more liberal than Arizona or Texas or Oklahoma or Georgia or other areas of the country. Um, and just like uh, Trump said, look at Kansas. Kansas has become more liberal than than they used to be. Mm -hmm. And that's very true. But I the main focus is women's health. Women and and what's taught in schools, nothing anymore. Kathy, you raise your hand that this is an issue that's important to you. It is. I have daughters and granddaughters, and I would hope that the decision of something that serious would be allowed to be made by them and their healthcare provider, not by someone sitting in a, on a bench or in a boardroom or wherever, making that decision for them to be able to or not to be able to control their own body. And it's not realistic to believe if you like this liberal law better, you everyone can just move where they want to. Those things just aren't realistic. You can see the extended interview on our YouTube page or our website.